if you're watching this, this is only going to be on YouTube. This is a bonus episode. Um, it's not going to be on any other platform, Apple Music, Spotify, nothing. This is only on YouTube. So hit the subscribe button. So, all right, so let's jump on Kanye real quick. Uh, wait, so before honestly, you continue, ladies and gentlemen, this is a bonus episode because our guests wanted to talk about this. So we we're going to talk about more. it. We bon, bon. want more. <laughs> <laughs> all right, lay, lay it on them, lay it on them. I really wanted to hear what you guys had to say about it. About the, All right, so about, about the what? current about rant. What? The, cur- yes. the rant, right? The current rants about the ownership and stuff like that. Well, who are you me? talking about? I, we mean what you're talking about. Do you Kanye. Know? Kanye. <clears throat> Switch. No, but, but not the people that are listening. They don't We, know. we they just don't got know. back uh, on the air. Bonus episode. This guy here. Look. Good all morning, right. So Kanye, Kanye <laughs> has been on a rant lately about uh, artists and their ownerships and their masters, right? So he's been going in. Um, he, I, he He's even going, what, past, I want to say, just the normal labels, but even like, so we got Universal, and we're talking Vivendi. We, he, he's going up even higher, right? Right. Well, only Kanye has that type of access to even reach those type of people. But um, he's been going on a rant about it. So that's what it is. I mean, Pete on his Grammy. Um, mm-hmm. you know, he, said, he, he said he's giving 50% back to the art, his artists? Well, he said, see that, he said that right? after the fact, but he did mm-hmm. say that. I mean, initially, it was more so about him and his contracts. But of course, there was some questions like, yo, you talk on all of this, but what about the contracts you gave out? Mm. So then okay. now he's like, I'm willing to give the 50% that he owns back to them. So um, I mean, I, I, that's cool. I'm I'm cool with that. You know, he he's saying it's more, he's doing he's not doing it just for him, he's doing it for everybody to set a new standard in the industry. Um, I don't see a problem with it. I'm like this is one rant that I'm cool with, <laughs> you know. What I'm saying with, with, yeah. as far as Kanye is concerned, because um, if that's the case, you know, he's like you said, he's setting a new standard, and this is for all artists um, across the board. So, um, you know, for everybody, I don't know how that's gonna work. I don't know how labels are gonna function with everything. You know, what I'm saying like they're giving everything back. I don't, I don't know how how that'll happen. Well, um, now he put out a plan, right? He put out his own platinum plan. He put out a plan, like okay. some Y interceptor plan, where somehow that they kind of invest back into the artist, into a business, and then they make some kind of money off of it. I just don't see how if the artist is getting, you know, ninety percent of that money, how the label functions. You know, I mean, I I don't know. I need have they even have they even placed a value on his masters? I don't, you know, well, so the thing is, he, last year from the lawsuit, he received an undisclosed amount from that settlement, right? So he still doesn't owe, I mean, he still doesn't have his, 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 um, masters, but they're saying, like, basically he can afford the buyout, um, so. But but they ain't given a price, though. They didn't give a price yet, yeah, but the thing is, they're like, yo, he got them to talk though, because how many artists can go above their label head who owns that company and then speak with them? You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like a billionaire. I think right. Kanye is talking spiritual talk. That's what I think. I think yeah. okay. he's seen that. I think you know, like when the scripture talks about you know not not owing anyone money. Or you know how when you take out a loan, you're a slave yeah, to the to the lender and, and stuff like that. And I feel like he's come to realization, like, man, like these loans, because that's what it is. These labels are giving you a loan, mm-hmm. and they're taking their money back, and then they're taking interest, and they pretty much own you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you have to drop these albums, you have to do this, you have to do it this way, the way I want it. And he sees that and he's like, you know, now that he's been enlightened and he has Christ and it seems like he's growing, I think that he's he's like, yo, this ain't this ain't it. This ain't how God intended us to do business or us to, to you know, what I mean, make music and enjoy our craft. You know what I mean? So so that, he, that's my take a, on it. 
here's a question for me. And, I, and, and in the last episode, I think we talked about this, where I'm not familiar with how the labels work, but what majority of the labels uh, revenue comes from uh, the, the masters? I don't or know. If, if anybody can. So, so most of it you're saying? or I mean, a lot there, of it because so, whether it's played on the radio, it's played in movies and anything, you know what I mean? That money goes to them. And then from that, they the artists get their cut. But the labels owning that, it's, you know, that's... Well, so the so majority of a label's revenue is these masters. Let me put it like this, right? I think Michael Jackson owns the Beatles catalog, or he did. And he owned so, all of Sony. He owned 50% of the Sony, of Sony TV right? catalog. Right. Yes. So mo- the, most of his uh, wealth was that. Yeah, it was generated from that. From the masters. So imagine it was, like it was literally every artist that made, you know, that joined Sony. I mean, the new artists that were added on. I don't think people know the extent of what Michael Jackson actually owned. Right. Um it was it's ridiculous. Yeah, the James Bond theme, um, the Beatles, wow. Elvis, every mm-hmm. artist that was getting added onto Sony's ATV publishing catalog, Beyonce, Eminem. Uh, there's even EDM artists that are added onto to that. And Michael Jackson was generating oh, all this revenue. And because he basically owned half of that, that company. Does, does Michael and, Jackson own KB stuff too? <laughs> well, here's the, his estate sold it back to ATV. Yeah. Michael Jackson fought oh, okay. tooth and nail to the death, did not never wanted to sell it back to them. Yeah, he but was they were even, young. they were even withholding his revenue from him for most of the years. They tanked his album on purpose because they wanted to get their half back so bad. He did wow. not want to sell it back to them. Now, so, yeah. Wow. Now, now the That's thing why with, you could buy a giraffe. Now, the thing with the yeah. mass, the master <laughs> situation. This dude, eh, man. <laughs> no, it is, though. I mean, it is. <laughs> no, like, if I he own was, the Sony, you're going to see a giraffe in my backyard. Right. No, he was but, music's first billionaire. Yo, that's podcast quotable. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an eclipse. What, what you were saying, um, Switch? Now, the thing with these these masters, right, it's like you sign to the label, right? Mm-hmm. And now let's say you leave the label. That label still owns those masters that were under that label, right? So, yes. So it's up to them if they want to release it or if somebody else wants to buy, pay a, a large amount of money so, and then so, buy it So out. it's infinite, infinite. Right. No, so like, let's say you come out with a classic song. They own that mm-hmm. for if you're on the next label. If you went from Sony to... I don't know what other label, Interscope, Universal. whatever, so, Universal, right? Because there's only like a few, three, a few four. people that really own it, all, all all these labels and stuff. But basically, they still own that song. They still own the rights to that song, right? And yeah. is it is it more than that as well? Is it also like your future projects? Does anyone know that or your future stuff? Or is I it think just... it depends on whatever their contract is. Right, right. But I have a question for the room. Um, what do you guys think is, do you think that the label, um, like these major labels and things even have a position still in music industry now? Because independent artistry obviously enables artists to make music from their bedrooms, right? People are making whole, whole albums and stuff on their iPad, right? (laughs) So like, what do you guys see the point? (laughs) What is the point still of the big labels? Because we hear all of these horror stories. I'd like, have you, have you ever heard of a contract where like a really good artist came out and was super happy with it? Cause I have not, it seems oh. like, um, right. it seems like artists are always feeling like they got ripped off, always feeling like they it's got cheated. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's always a fight. So why are we continuing to like, you know, like fantasize these contracts? Like somebody's like, I got signed. Everybody's like, congrats. We don't even know what the agreement was. They could have got screwed. You know, man, I've been saying this for years. I've been saying this since MySpace. why are people <clears throat> signing with labels? I- I think it's because, and I think that the labels know, like, you know, we, we talk about age, right? Like, oh, you know, they don't like to get older artists because of longevity and stuff like that. But I think that the labels know to prey on younger individuals, right? Like in hip hop, you give a dude some money, some chains, a little Gucci <laughs> and, and some fame. He's ready to sign his life away, not knowing mm-hmm. what, not knowing the talent that he Bars. possesses. And not knowing what, you know, 
like what Master P said, when Master P mm. said they offered him what one million dollars or something yeah. like that, yeah, and he, he said it, out. he said he he said I'm not taking one million because I know I if they offer him one million, that means I can make ten times more than what they're willing to offer me. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But I don't think a lot of these artists, you know, some of these Definitely. artists are coming from like, and I'm talking about hip hop because that's that's the genre I'm focusing on. Um, you know, a lot of them come from poverty. A lot of them come from the hood. Don't have too much, you know what I'm saying, going on. And this is a big opportunity for them. You know what I mean? Now, there is, I can say this, that labels have a connection that that is that is bigger than than most artists. You know what I'm saying? And what I mean is they they have connections with public publicists, they have connections yeah. to the playlist. You know Thinking. what I'm saying? If I if mm-hmm. I send my my music to a playlist, rap caviar, and then someone on the label sends it, they're gonna listen to them before they they even give me a shot. You know what I'm saying? I would have to create a buzz of my own, big enough to get the attention of a label or get the attention of uh, the media outlets, et cetera, et cetera. But now for these artists that have been established, let's say a Drake, uh, this guy on Drake. Right, I keep saying Drake. All right, forget oh, yeah. it. Uh, Travis Scott, wh- whoever else is out there, right? These guys already have a name, so they can bring. The, they already have the following, so they can get. If they can get out of that contract, then I say yes, get out of it. And I would even say independent artists shouldn't even should at this point try to Don't do it on consider. their own, and and get their money, take out their own loan if they could. You know what I mean? Take out a personal loan and invest and pay it back yourself. eventually, and invest in yourself like you would in college or anything else. You know what I'm saying? But. I get it, though. I do understand that the labels have, you know, they've been doing this for years. They have the connections. They, they know, you know, they know how to make the machine run and, and the system run. But I would say, yes, stay independent. You heard? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, in a label perspective, like you said, they they have the connections. They have everything. And I think that's what's valuable when it comes to to the label. If I, I was I would consider it a shortcut. Uh, type of way because you have people like Russ um, who is not signed to any label he's dropped singles and albums and I don't believe that he signed Um, so it's definitely possible especially in this this day and age where you can just upload you know your music um, to all these platforms so the label I guess you would say is a shortcut. And obviously they got the money behind it and, you know, make your music videos or, and, and, and all that stuff. So is it easier today in 2020 to pop off in music? I would say it's, it's a little difficult unless you have a backing of a label. Hmm. Is it worth it? Mm. See, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know the economics of it. Obviously, if, if Kanye is talking about um, giving 50% of masters back and trying to get uh, Taylor Swift, uh, her masters from Scooter um, and all this other stuff, then obviously it, it's been a, a, an enslavement uh, type of thing. Yeah. So, but, yeah. but now Kanye, he's not saying don't get on a label. He's saying, the label needs to reform the way they're doing business. Mm, you know right. So it's not so much, yeah. hey, let's just abandon the labels. He's saying, listen, we need to do business a little better. There's an issue going on here. You know, He's like more of a partnership. Right. Mm. Right. So, and, so, and, uh-huh. I'm sorry, uh, go ahead. I was going to say that, uh, uh, you know, we, we talked about KB, and he left Reach, and he joined Sony. Why would, if, if labels you know, maybe don't matter anymore. Why would he do that? Knowing he has the following, knowing he has like, uh, but all those, all those things, it could depend on with the label. It could depend on his contract on what he was able to come up with, with them. You know, maybe, maybe they, maybe they offered him his masters. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not, uh, 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 it's not a common thing, but there are artists who come in, with you know being able to maintain their masters it's just it's not something they do all the time i mean but it, it's possible you know they, I, I haven't finished watching it but i think um when kb was on ruslan um yeah. they spoke to that point a little bit as far as you know early on when he signed with reach you know it's like that beginner contract that really isn't whatever and then you know you grow to this platinum status within a certain genre and then you know obviously KB's been big on ownership 
and entrepreneurship and business. So whatever it is that he may have found himself in at mm-hmm. Sony seemed to make enough sense to where he's coming out on top and still having ownership of his creativity and artistry. Right, right. And nice. what said, were you going to say? He said yeah. on that Ruse Lunch um, podcast that he had a good deal with, with Reach. Oh, okay. He mentioned that, so... But let me ask you, um, are you guys familiar with Wilberforce, William Wilberforce? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So so William Wilberforce, uh, going back, um, but he permitted, he was part of the um, slave trade, um, slave trade, uh, you know, uh, in Europe back in 1800s. Yeah, 1800s. And Wilberforce, uh, I'm sorry, 1900, early 1900s. Wilberforce uh, became a believer and went against the whole movement of, you know, the whole slave labor um, because of his faith. So is Kanye the modern day Wilberforce? I mean, I said, I put that link there. Check it out. I mean, it's, it's very interesting. That's what you said is actually what I think is going on. I think, I think Kanye as a new believer is trying to make sense of things in his head as he's reading his Bible. Right. So I think he's reading his Bible and he's like, yo, I have the power to help these people out. Like, I need to do this. It's my duty. So I actually I actually think that is what's going on. Yo, I actually and we, we spoke about this before. Right. Um, Guys, when we were saying how, you know, when you first get saved and you got that zeal, like 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 you ready to just preach to everybody you see that comes, you know, what I'm saying that walk past like you just over the top with it at times. Right. And you could see that in Kanye, like right now, like he just wants to do everything at one time. It just so happens that this particular guy who has a voice in a lot of areas and who has power and money, you know what I'm saying? We're seeing it play out in front of us. So I, I think that's the that's what's going on with him right now. He's like so excited and he just has this passion. And he's ready to change everything and touch anything that he can put his hands on at the moment. Yeah. True. True. So, so do we, mean, we answer the question? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there isn't really an, an answer, you know, right, like right. A, a direct answer. I think it's, there is obviously nuance in different contracts and, you know, whatever the artist agrees to is going to be different in every situation or whatever. But I, I don't know. I just, I kind of think, um, with when artists like like Kanye have kind of been in the industry for a long time, they don't even really consider independent artistry like that. Mm-hmm. Um, even if it's like you are already popping, like if you're at the end of your contract, why wouldn't you just go and do your own thing? You know, mm-hmm. um, but I don't know. I guess some people see the value in having the different connections through the label and. I don't know. I don't it, know what to and, say about and, that. And it's also, I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's really the money. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel. Like these artists, they see these other artists that are popping, and they w- what do these other artists do? Well, I'm and I'm like once again, I'm talking about hip hop because I'm not talking about all genres. Big money, big chains, right? Uh, big production. So it's like I want that. I need that to look like I'm successful, right? Or be successful, and. You know, when these guys that have been in this game for a long time, like Kanye, Nas, Jay-Z, all these guys, they look out and they're like, that's that's, that's not what it's about at the end. That's not the end game. You know what I'm saying? For them. Um, but I know I know how it can entice younger artists who are like, man, just give me a bag. I don't care. You could take you give me 360, whatever, whatever deal you're going to give me. Just give it to me. I'm going to I'm going to you know, what I'm saying I'm with it. <laughs> As long as you give me a bag and I and I, and I look good, or I, you know, it's because some people want fame, some people want money, some people, and I think that that issue is always going to be there because of our own sinful desires to be, mm. uh, as the mm. word says, the pride of life or the or the uh, facts. You know what I mean? Our own thing. Lust that we, no, I need that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the lust of the flesh. So that's always going to be there because sure. we want that. The artists mm-hmm. want that. They want that recognition you know what i'm saying they don't want to put in that work and say let me grind for my own my own thing you know let me invest in myself i want yeah. the shortcut route you know, Yo, I mean? you know what i always say we we have a, a microwave society right now right mm-hmm. so we look on social media and we see the end result but nobody sees the ugly work and nobody mm-hmm. wants to do that 
Right. Facts. Shaba. Hey, y'all preaching. I love it. <laughs> Is there any reason why you don't think we might see in the spirit of what Brie K was bringing up, like label versus independent, why we don't see maybe more people linking up with their, their independence to make their own navigation together, like That's building your like, like like building your team? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, there's a lot of this, like, you know, independent artists seems like, you know, like doing it yourself. Like you figure out, like I'm HR, I'm the this, I'm that, I'm, you know, whatever. And then finding a way to bust out of your shell of maybe, mm -hmm. you know, depending on your character, you could be a very, um, you know, vulnerable person and lack trust. But, you know, if you don't want to make that risk of going to a label that's a machine that you feel like, Build might, your own rob, machine. might rob you of all your talent and your ownership of stuff, but say, how could I make my own team? Build your own how machine. Can I, how, could, how could I, uh, you know, align with people that are talented in certain arenas and make our own agreements. The to try to Avengers. Bro, you yeah. hit it on, mm -hmm. you hit it on the nail, Josh. And I tell, I tell the local artists around me all the time. I'm like, the only thing that separates us from everyone else isn't so much the talent. It's the, the money or the machine behind us. Mm -hmm. And if we can all invest our money into each other, then, you know, we, we can push our brand mm -hmm. even further. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was a time. Like, there was a time yeah. when everybody was had a label. Mm -hmm. You know, every every artist was you know that was their goal, right? To start a label. Yeah, nobody had distribution. Yeah, right. and now distribution is pretty simple. But just, very I good think, question. I think people just don't want to put in a work, man. That's what it is. Everybody wants a shortcut. Like mm -hmm. if if you know if you mm -hmm. know. I can do this myself, but it's going to take me 10 years to get there. But what you're not looking at is, yeah, it's going to take me 10 years to get there, but I own all of that for right. life. Mm -hmm. Right. And a lot of a lot of times labels aren't even really messing with you if you aren't if you haven't already put in a large amount of work right. to I build up yourself. So I don't see why right. artists don't just continue that trajectory. But I guess I see what you're saying, because I guess, you know, in order to be on that level of production when it comes to shows, when it comes to everything, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of you can tell a lot of times when it's an independent show versus like a labels behind it. Mm -hmm. But like you said, in 10 years, though, no one's going to be able to tell the difference and you will be able to own everything. So here's, here's what's crazy. I, I got a question for y'all. So I used to listen to Drake when he first came out, like mm -hmm. comeback season Drake, when he was actually spitting bars. The dude mm -hmm. had a following from Degrassi. Why did he ever sign with anyone? I never understood that. Yeah, it was like a bit. Oh, of I mean, in, right? in, in, the, in the rap world, everybody just knew him from the Degrassi. Nobody knew him from, from rap, no? So nah, maybe that's he what was, he did it? Nah, he was when when Drake, when comeback season dropped, Drake was popping. Like he was on the radio with no label push mm -hmm. whatsoever. Mm, yeah. Interesting. That yeah, was that was kind money. of a different time though, right? That was all like uh at that time, and I agree with you, but I feel like at that time everybody was just getting on labels. There wasn't none of this independent talk really, right? It wasn't I mean not, it was still it, it, independence, it but, but I think he could have. He didn't. He didn't need a label, to be honest. Yo, Drake could have been the hip hop Moses. <laughs> <laughs> Every Moses needs an Aaron, but you know. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> Maybe he just wanted that cosign from Little Wayne. Maybe he needed that. <laughs> well, Aaron was probably forty for him. He had his own producer cranking out hit after hit. Yeah. Yeah, so man. He had it. I mean, I don't know why, but. But to go back to Bree's point, she made a really good point because, she, you know, the the labels don't even like she says. If you don't have a buzz or a following, they're not even. Then, so you they're taking the work. they're taking the easy route now. They're not oh, doing yeah. artist development or anything. They're like, right. you come with what you have already. We ain't trying to babysit you or nothing. We're just gonna put more money and get our money out of it. You know what I mean? Which, which, which makes the kind of hard ticket sales you do on your own. Right, 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 right. Which makes the whole situation even more backwards. So you telling me I got to come to you with a million plays already? Then what do I need you for? Right. Like, what you going to give me more? Like sync licensing for some stuff? I'll, I'll figure that out with somebody else, maybe. Right. One other, that's one a good point. Thing, that's a good, that's yeah. a fair point. Mm. One of the things I remember, uh, Lecrae talked about his journey with Columbia. And he mentioned specifically how... 
uh, the tours were bigger with, when it comes to uh, Colombia and the connections were big, were, you know, more known within the industry, which is why he had signed uh, with Colombia. And then yeah. in, his, in his recent uh, videos, when he talked about how he left uh, Colombia and just focused on reach, um, he mentioned how it was hard for him to, you know, uh, drop a single uh, right then and there uh, because the label, you know, you had to ask permission for this or they were more focused on somebody else's release and all that stuff where when you're independent, obviously you just drop it whenever you want to drop it, you know? So I guess it's, it's like, a, I guess a double-edged sword when it comes to the, the, the label signing and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, he got to pay for that tour anyway. Yeah. Our, our, our CH. I wonder what these contracts are for CHH artists. Oh, I don't know. Oh man, I don't know. Pull them out. Pull them out. Wait, wait, you, you think they're like three sixty or what? I don't know. I don't Some, know. I don't know, but I will say that there is an artist at CHH. I won't say who it is, but they did get signed to a label, and Adam. they were telling me, um, they were just like, "It's cool that you and Kasari are kind of able to drop music whenever you want. You could say whatever you want." And he's like, "That is one thing I miss about being independent." Wow. Um, Dang. Switch. They just blow up your spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on no label, man. I know, I know. I'm, I'm TNC. Joking. Um yeah, yeah. TNC, I got you <laughs> that, that that definitely makes sense. So you could just drop whenever and you don't have to deal with 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 the label. I say yo, TNC label coming soon. Coming soon, man. Sign your contracts, man. <laughs> Sixty deals all around. Let's make it happen. We all, we only gonna take eighty five percent. Don't worry. But <laughs> <laughs> well, very good stuff, man. Thank nah, y'all for that good. bonus, bonus content, that bonus question, bonus content. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you next week. And uh, make sure you get them Watts and Vantas uh, cease and desist shirts available now, and also the That's Not Christian. Uh, use promo code TNC and. Mm-hmm. I think that's it. And uh, we got a message here. Watson Vontes Records coming Watson soon. Vontes. I don't know. This Watson is Jimmy, Vontes. man. Watson Vontes toilet seat covers for Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Please. Yeah, right. Salute.